Hey everybody, welcome to SI.com. The final four is set and here to set up Michigan State versus Duke is SI College Basketball Editor Ted Keith. Ted, it's the pesky underdog Michigan State led by a coach who has 494 wins, one national title, and this is his seventh final four appearance against Coach K and Duke. What has been the most impressive thing to you about Michigan State's run right here to the final four? I think it's a, the path they took was the toughest that any team had to, had to go through. They had to beat a two seed, a three seed, and a four seed in succession. Virginia first, then the regionals, they beat Oklahoma, then finally the four seed Louisville in the regional final to get to the final four. Uh, and frankly, if they had had to play the one seed in Villanova, does anyone at this point think that Tom Izzo wouldn't have won that game anyway? <laughs> He's won more games than any other coach in the history of college basketball as an underseeded team. So despite the fact that He's going to be a seven facing a one in Duke. I think that's got to make him feel good. It's the fact that they're finally playing the way we thought they were going to. If you go back to the start of the season, they played Navy in the season opener and got really pushed. And people said, well, that's just Michigan State. You know, they challenged themselves a true road game, first game of the year. Then in December, they lost at home to Texas Southern. Then in January and February, they had a slow start in the Big Ten. And all year, you kept saying, when is this team finally going to play like a Tom Izzo team? Well, they waited until March, but that's Izzo's month, and they've finally done it. They've been playing nothing but stiff competition coming down the stretch here. And the wins that they picked up against Virginia, Oklahoma, and Louisville really showed that vintage Tom Izzo Spartan toughness. I think he's wanted his team to play with all year. Going into overtime against a Louisville team that, frankly, is probably more athletic than them, can pressure the basketball. They withheld those runs and had a chance to win the game in regulation, let it get away, got another chance, and took advantage of it. So the way that they've capitalized on opportunities, the way they're playing their best ball right now, the way they're getting, frankly, a higher level of performance from Travis Trice than they've had to date so far. He's been averaging over 20 points a game the last few nights out in the NCAA tournament. To me, that makes them far more dangerous than your typical seven seed. And remember, last year, a seven seed, UConn, went through a two, a three, and a four, which happened to be Michigan State, by the way, in the regional final and route to winning a national championship. So the fact that they're here doesn't mean that this is as far as they're going to go just because they have to play uh, one seed in both the semifinal and potentially a championship game. They're fully capable of winning this thing. Absolutely. On the other side, I think Duke has been super impressive because those freshmen that they rely on, they look like veterans now. They haven't been shying away from the moment. Justice Winslow has been hitting big shot after big shot. Even against Gonzaga, he didn't have a particularly great game on the offensive end of the floor, went 4 for 14, but still comes up with that big dagger three-point shot at the end of the game. I think Tyus Jones has looked poised. He looked really good when the lights are on in every game this year. I think Julio Okafor has had a rougher NCAA tournament than many people expected, but you can still see he's a matchup problem. Problem, even for a team like Gonzaga that has big guys. Karnowski didn't really know what to do with him, and Sabonis didn't really know what to do with him. And then you look at a team like Michigan State, and you say, they don't really have a seven-footer like Jaleel Okafor. Is this a game where he can really turn it on, and he can be that MVP that people thought that he was going to be? How do you see this matchup playing out? Well, that's, I think, the most important thing is getting Julio Okafor back to being Julio Okafor. 26 points against San Diego State and own that game going 12 of 16 from the field. Last two games under 10 points both times out. I think it's the first time this year he's had back-to-back single-figure scoring games. But who's going to guard him? Brandon <laughs> Dawson is giving up six inches to him. You know, you're not going to put Matt Costello on him and hope for the best. There's not a lot of depth uh, among the big men for Michigan State. So it's always pick your poison with Duke. Can you shut down the guys slashing to the rim like Winslow? Can you shut down Cook and Tyus Jones on the perimeter? And then where does Michigan State go for its points? They've mostly been led by Travis Trice here, but if Duke is able to get out and guard and shut down Trice or even, frankly, just limit Denzel Valentine, I don't know where Michigan State can turn to for points in this game. And this isn't like when they played Louisville, a Louisville team that, frankly, has trouble scoring and trouble shooting. Duke doesn't figure to have that same problem. So many weapons on that court. I think Duke definitely has the edge here. What do you think? I think they've got the edge for sure. I think, you know, Michigan State has been manufacturing points out of nowhere. Bryn Forbes has been a guy who's been knocking down three-pointers. Travis Trice has been hitting shots from the parking lot. It's hard to imagine against a defense like Duke's that they would have the similar amount of success. But, of course, they just did it to Louisville, which plays a really tricky matchup zone, and they held their own and scored in the end. I think their defense has really been the key to their success so far in the NCAA tournament. They were great defensively against Virginia, which is an underrated offensive team, and they were great against Louisville. They shut down Montrezl Harrell almost entirely in the second half, and they forced Terry Rozier, who's a great offensive player, into a couple really bad shots down the stretch. So I think they can match up on that end of the floor. I think if the game is under 60, then that's where Tom Izzo wants it and where he can make some damage and possibly upset Duke. But I think talent-wise, again, they're very overmatched against Duke, but how can you bet against Tom Izzo in March? Yeah, you can't. <laughs> you don't. <laughs> no, you don't. Uh, for all of your Final Four coverage, stay right here on SI.com. For SI, I'm David Gardner.